At this point, there are two kinds of students. The first category of students who are attempting mock on a regular basis and the second category of students who are still wondering and have not started giving mock test. So at first, this type of children, I would like to say mock test dena shuru kar do because it is very, very, very important. Now, giving mock test is not the only thing. You should be able to analyze it properly and able to learn from your mistakes properly. Then only you will be able to improve yourself. It is very, very important to follow a mock test series properly and give all the mocks that the particular mock test series has. Specifically talking about Fodu Club test, all the mock tests vary in difficulty and in weightage, which is exactly how BITSAT works. So just giving one or two mocks and drawing out conclusion will not help you out. You should at least give 10 plus mocks so that you are actually familiarized with the actual BITSAT pattern. Now we have been getting a lot of queries that Bhaiya, how should we actually analyze mock test? What is the right way of analyzing mock test? And in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly that. We'll be taking a live example of our student at Fodu Club. We'll take one of his mock tests and I'll analyze that particular mock test properly in front of you so that you have a proper idea on how you should analyze your mock test. Before actually jumping on to the mock test and actually tell you how to actually analyze it, there are few points which are very, very important you should keep in your mind before analyzing a particular mock test. The very first thing you should keep in your mind is you should do new mistakes every single time. Now doing mistakes is completely all right. That is the purpose of giving mock tests. But doing new mistakes is important and not repeating the same mistakes again and again with every single mock. That is very, very important. Then only you will be able to improve. Now your focus should not be just increasing the marks. Okay, because as I told you, the mocks vary with difficulty and the weightage. So it's not necessary that your marks will certainly improve with the next mock because every mock test in itself is different. That is why your goal should not be just to focus on increasing the mock. Suppose you have mock 1 mein 220 marks. Hai. So it's not necessary that you'll definitely score more than that in the next mock. So your target should be to actually improve on the mistakes that you have done on a particular mock and not repeat those same mistakes again in the second mock. If that is happening, you are going perfectly right and there is absolutely no problem. Don't focus too much on marks that bhaiya, mere marks improve nahi ho rahe ya. Ek mock mein bhi 250 aaye the, is mock mein 220 ho gaye. That is perfectly all right. Important thing is don't make the same old mistakes in the next mock. The major mistake that students do is that mock test to de dete hain, but they do not work properly on getting the proper feedback, on reviewing it properly and that's why you are not able to improve properly. You need to shift your mindset and you should look at mock tests as mirrors who will actually tell you your shortcomings so that you can improve in the next mock. The very first thing you should do right now is to make a mistakes notebook and write down all the mistakes that you are doing. I'll tell you in detail on how to actually use that but right now you should make a mistakes notebook. All right so let's jump on to the mock test and let me show you how to actually do it. Okay so as you can see this student has given 10 mocks till now and I'll actually show you the variation with each mock so that you can actually understand how mock tests work. Let's say in the test number three, he scored 254. In test four, he scored 275. In test five, he scored 279. In test six, again, his marks fall to 248 marks. This shows that this paper might be a little bit tough or might be tough according to his level of preparation. And uh, there might be weightage of certain topics which he might not have studied. But that does not mean that he hasn't improved in this particular mock test. He must have analyzed things properly and must have done new mistake in this mock, which is absolutely all right. As I was saying, it is not actually important that you must increase your marks with every single mock, but to actually make new mistakes every single time. In the next mock, he scored again 246 marks. In the next mock, he scored 287. In next, he scored 284. And in the test number 10th, he scored 301 marks. And he still has so many days left. If he continues this, he's definitely going to score 300 plus marks in the actual bit side. Paper. As I told you, the level of BITSAT is a range and not a single level of difficulty. That is why you need to give so many mock tests of different difficulties and weightage levels so that you are finally prepared for the final exam. So let's take one of the mocks in which he scored 287 mark. As you can see, there is an analysis that is given to you. Now, again, after this analysis, you need to do your own analysis properly, which I'm going to show you how you should do it. So this is a very basic analysis, right? Here, 
it is mentioned how much time you have taken the section wise analysis and the marks that you have scored in different different subjects so you can see all of those marks note down here you should also note down how much negative marks that you have scored how many questions you have marked wrong and do a basic analysis now again this will be a very basic analysis and a surface level analysis that you'll have in front of you after this you'll have to dig deep and put in your own efforts to analyze each and every question properly before doing that you also have the option to compare sections over here so you can actually see the various score versus section accuracy versus section and time versus section and you can also compare it with topper so this is an overall basic analysis you should do and get a proper idea of where do you stand and what is your accuracy speed time management in different different sections now let us move to the actual paper okay as you can see this is the physics section he has skipped question number 4 and the question number 16 and question number 30 are wrong similarly with chemistry you can do the same now the main thing is how you should analyze it there is a tagging method which you should use to quickly analyze your paper in the least amount of time and actually get an idea of where do you stand what is this tagging method it is called qmcl theek hai q means quick m means more c means correct and l means lost so according to yourself you can name these tags and you can do tagging now the meaning of q is that you were able to solve that question quickly the meaning of m is that you took more than 2 minutes to solve that particular question you took more than the time actually required to solve that question c means that the question is correct and l means you have lost marks in that question and that means the question is wrong so now you have to use this tagging method for all the questions that you have attempted and go deep into it so write all the question numbers like this so there can be four possible combinations the first combination is quick qc which is you were able to solve the question quickly as well as the question was correct now this is the best case scenario and this is how your most of the question should look like the next tagging is ql which is you mark the question quickly but it was incorrect you lost marks in it so you have to keep a note of this particular question the next is you took more time and your answer is correct you also have to take a note of these type of questions because mostly students ignore the questions which they have marked correct but there is an opportunity to learn from the, those questions in which you have taken more time so that you can actually figure out that whether or not you have wasted time in such question and how you can improve your speed in the next mock test and the last and the worst thing that you can do is ml that is you took more time in solving a particular question and you also lost marks in it this is the worst thing which you can do now you have to use this tagging method for all the questions once you are done with it then comes the next step now you have to segregate those questions again whether it was a conceptual mistake and if it was a conceptual mistake what was it exactly whether you didn't know the concept didn't you have enough practice you didn't know the theory or you knew the theory but you wrongly applied the concept that is also a case so taking the example as you can see in this question the student took around 1 minute and 30 seconds and marked it correctly and which is an ideal case and it is perfectly all right now moving on to the next question though he has marked this particular question correct but he took 3 minutes 20 seconds which is a lot of time so definitely there is a scope of improvement in this question now it can be the case that he had time left at the end of his paper and then he gave time to this particular question and ultimately marked it correct but there can also be a situation where he attempted this question at first and took so much time because of which he was not able to solve other questions as you can see his time was 3 minute 20 seconds and on average the time taken is 4 minutes 18 seconds so this actually tells that this might be a trap question and you should actually avoid this question and give time to other questions the other type of mistake could be silly mistake now silly mistake bhi hum bahut upar upar se likh dete hain but you should go deep into it that whether it was a calculation mistake or whether i applied the wrong formula or whether i marked the answer incorrect suppose question mein pucha tha which of the following options is incorrect but you marked the option which was stated correctly so you have to go deep into it the next thing could be managing time as i told you that you took more time and the question was correct and you took more time and the question was incorrect again for the board the scenario why did you take more time you'll have to note it down was it because of your ego or what was the actual reason and the next thing is irrelevant thinking a lot of times students do irrelevant thinking on a particular question and that's what cost them marks so you don't want that right 
So for all the questions, you do the tagging. After tagging, you do a proper analysis according to this particular chart and in detail actually know what is the problem. And after that, as I told you, make a mistakes ka notebook and you write down all the mistakes that you have done. Now, how to actually maintain your mistakes ka notebook? I'll quickly give you an example. As you can see, this particular question is wrong. So I'll just make a short note kind of a thing so that I just remember the question which I have marked incorrect and write a small solution of it. So I'll just make M 3M radius R 3R and I'll just write the formula that is GM by R. This is just in my own language, in my own words, so that whenever I look into this, I remember this particular question and I know what mistake I did and it is clear in my head that I won't be doing this mistake again. Let's suppose if I took more time in solving that question, I'll write, let's say I took four minutes in solving this question and I should not do this again in the upcoming mocks. So this should be your proper approach. Now it is very, very important after you take a note of all these things, it is important that you revise this mistakes notebook and your analysis in a regular interval so that you remember every single mistake that you have done and you don't make the same mistakes again and again. By following this strategy to analyze mock test, a lot of students have improved immensely. You might think that it will take a lot of time, but that is what you have to invest. Solving a lot of mocks will not help, but solving less mock and analyzing the mocks in this particular way will help you improve properly and actually help you score good marks in the final exam. There was a guy named Harshit who scored just 93 percentile in J main, but he ended up scoring around 330 marks in the final Bitsat paper by following this mock test strategy and improving in every single mock. Again, by improving, I don't mean that your marks will improve, but you will make new mistakes every single time and you will not make the same mistakes again and again. That is very, very important. So examples like Harshit are endless. The only thing is you have to follow a particular test series properly, analyze the mocks in this particular way and nobody can stop you from scoring your best potential marks in the final bit sad paper. Now, this was all about how you can analyze your mock test. But to me, how to do revision properly? What is the correct method of doing revision? then you can click here and watch this video. Wish you all the very best. Saat mein